Hello, my name is Jason Owen. Welcome to my review for the anime Noragami. This premiered in 2014, brought to you by the main studio Bones. And Bones Studios uh, went through like, some hits and misses uh, for a while after Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, I believe they also worked on um, Akagami no Shiraki no Hime, Snow White the Red Hair. I feel that was a pretty big success. Over there, I believe the series composition for Noragami is also the series composition for uh, Snow White the Red Hair as well. So obviously keeping things in studio. Uh, but Noragami was really a big surprise to me. Did not really hear much about this anime. I was kind of late to the party on this. Watched it a little after uh, the whole series uh, ended. Uh, went on Netflix uh, very quickly, I would say, for the timeline uh, for this anime. So I caught this on Netflix. It was really great. I was not expecting uh, how emotionally in-depth this story was and how actually oriented the story was as well. But basically, a formal story from A and N uh, is described as this. Yato is a minor deity who lacks even a single shrine. In order to build his own shrine, he scrawls a cell number on the wall of a downtown bathroom, telling people he will help them in exchange for a 5 yen offering, becoming a self-styled delivery god. Yori, the daughter of a respectable family, is almost in a traffic accident, but is rescued by Yato. This causes her to become a Hanoi, a person who can easily lose her soul. She chases down Yato, and then begin to work together. Yato also finds a boy named Yukine who becomes a sacred treasure that can be used by God. The three of them battle Yu who bring harm to humans as Yato's hidden history is gradually revealed. And so that's basically the gist of the story. We follow these characters in Yato, Yukine, and Hiyori. Their relationship together is very much a big part of the story. It really goes full circle, especially by the middle point of the episode. Won't really spoil too much what happens, but a big emotional moment involving Yukine and Yato was really well done, I would think. Uh, and definitely their relationship together is the core uh, elements of the show. Basically, you know, not really much of a story per se. I mean, definitely is a big villain by the end and the battle sequence is pretty cool. And Yato and Hiyori's relationship is even strengthened through that battle. We meet other characters along the way and Bishamon, who in Origami Aragato, uh, basically why I'm doing this review is before the new season uh, comes out for Noragami. It's all about Bishamon in the new season uh, for Noragami. We meet Bishamon and her uh, Shinki as they're called Sacred Treasures. Uh, Kofuku is also introduced by episode uh, three or like four, somewhere in like the beginning stages of the series. We uh, Kofuku is very um, like a girlfriend type for Yato, very upbeat. It also gets serious at times. Really like how the voice actors in this, uh, the Japanese voice actress for Kofuku is Aki Toyasaka. She really does a good job at sort of blending the character and the serious moments and also the hot light hard moments and the fun moments for the character uh, in Kofuku. Really like that character. Uh, Yato, of course, is the main character, but we mostly follow uh, Hiyori through the beginning stages of the series. Then we get into Yato, his backstory, and who he is, what kind of god he actually is, and sort of the tragic, not only tragic, but dark past that he has. The, the tragic past does involve Bishamon. I'm pretty sure that's what they're going to go through in Season 2 of Noragon. Me. Really excited for that. Really curious where this show uh, goes uh, from season one because season one is very lighthearted. Uh, lots of banter between the characters, all back and forth, especially in these beginning stages of Yukine, him getting introduced. And also, the series does have its very serious moments. I won't call them dark, but more serious moments about life and how you treasure life and what it means uh, to those who are already dead and also gods like Yato and stuff like that. They're really great uh, things that are well done, especially the Shinto religion of Noragami and Japan in general. You know, Japan is more of a Shinto uh, religion where they believe in multiple gods, multiple deities, and they have all these shrines to honor these gods. And it really does get into that. It's really well done there. More so than any other anime that I can think of that really does it well. Uh, and also a good anime in general as well. So the art style is really well done, especially some of the set pieces and also the wide shots that are shown. Really well done, uh, to say the least, for Bones, who again have gone through some uh, hits and misses with Full of My Alchemist, uh, Stone at the Red Hair, Eureka 7, and all the other uh, anime uh, that I've worked on before that haven't really uh, lived up to Full Metal Alchemist back in 2003, and now I think this is their big hit that they're hoping on. At least I think it's a big hit uh, myself, but I'm not really sure about the whole uh, 
anime community uh, per se, whether this is a uh, well received or not. I mean, average score is average out to like seven out of ten, eight out of ten, and stuff like that. There, so I think it is pretty well received. Uh, this anime is, and definitely the characters, the uh, crazy things that this show does doesn't really make much sense, but they do explain it and they do show it all in action. That really does. Uh, pretty faithfully to the manga. I really recently uh, read a couple of volumes of the manga, really well um, written story and also the art style is very great as well and the anime kind of does follow the manga very closely uh, per se. Obviously they take the liberties and whatnot there, adds a few things as well but I think the um, manga anime uh, adaptation is really well done as well. So again if you haven't really read the manga I would recommend to do so because it does uh, give you some little backstory, uh, little, little things here as well obviously things that can't be shown in the anime for pacing and again the pacing of the show is really well done as well you don't really feel like the show is taking any left turns or going anywhere that you weren't expecting uh, obviously there are a few moments that are do come out of nowhere and they are kind of rushed I think because it's only 12 episodes that this uh, series season 1 and series 2 is uh, going through so I think maybe 24 episodes would have been very much better I think to flush out some storylines and flush out some characters as well but I think what they are trying to do at least build up this relationship between Yato, uh, Yukine, and Hiyori I think what they are doing there really was well done and I think that's the main basis of this. You, you follow these characters and you really believe in their relationship with each other especially when a key moment comes in involving Hiyori uh, really uh, turns the series around and really strengthens their relationship with each other. The show does get into some shonen tropes where they um, repeat uh, some active sequences over and over again involving Yato's uh, use of the sword uh, in Yukine as a Shinki. Uh, that's really repeated a lot in this series. Uh, it kind of annoys me a little bit sometimes uh, with showing an anime when they do that because, you know, we get it already. We get what the attack is and you don't really have to show it. So it seems like something to add on to the runtime of the show, uh, each episode basically. And um, it's a basic shonen trope and I get it, but still um, that's one little negative for me there. Also, again, a little rushed. I think the series is. I think some other characters could have been flushed out, especially the villain. Uh, the villain of the series, I won't get into too much because it's a little bit of a spoiler, kind of, uh, but still, the villain for myself isn't really that fleshed out. It's not really that threatening, kind of, in a way, mostly for an emotional standpoint. He's threatening, but still, I don't think the villain was all that fleshed out, and I'm very curious where they go. Noragami Aragoto, again, involving the Bishamon arc, part of the manga, and so more Bishamon is very much needed, I think. There's very uh, key things, uh, interesting things they did in the OVAs uh, for Noragami that really could be interesting to see if they do that in Aragoto, which, I guess, roughly translates to like a rough style, uh, per se, so maybe a tone shift for this show, because mostly the tone for Noragami is very lighthearted, uh, very serious at times, kind of gets to thinking about life uh, and how we live it and sort of how we take it for granted in a kind of way. And so that's what I like about the series, getting more to Shinto, that religion there, and sort of the basics of Shinto uh, as a religion for Japan. And so again, very great series and for rating, I'd probably give this series a 8 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. Some minor things that I wasn't really a big fan of. The pacing, I really would like it if the show was a lot longer in terms of episode counts, but still 12 episodes, pretty standard, uh, but still I uh, really like it more if they fleshed out some of the characters a little bit more, learn more about the world in general because there's some different uh, terms they use that are kind of explained in a way that's basic, but still I would like to learn more about them. I won't get too much into the whole terminology of the show itself, but still I would recommend uh, this show for watching, if, especially if you're excited uh, for se season two. If you heard about season two and you heard all the excitement about it, uh, I was very excited for season two of the show. And so again, uh, check it out if you want to, if you're into uh, religious type of things. Not going to get too religious, but sort of the basics of how the Shinto religion is sort of perceived or what it is basically in Japan. If you're into shonen action series, uh, it's very great for there. Some pretty good uh, comedy scenes uh, in there as well. It's not really too like jokey in a way, but there is some uh, funny comedic uh, elements of the show that they really mixed in with the shonen parts of the show. Um, also very um, supernatural elements with gods and whatnot there. So again, if you're into that kind of stuff there, I would really recommend uh, Noragami for you. 
So have you seen origami already or have you heard of what origami at least? If you have put all their thoughts and opinions on that in the comment section down below, any comments about origami if you ever heard about it or you watched it before, whether you like the show or not, or you're interested at least uh, for origami season 2 or at least season 1 if you haven't really seen it already. We'd really like to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to rate this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share this video as well, it really help me out, uh, we really appreciate that. Thank you for watching my anime review for Noragami uh, from the 2014 anime, also a season 2 coming out, I was really excited for that, so I'll probably do some episode recaps of that if I'm able to watch it, if it's on Crunchyroll or on Hulu or something like that, I'll probably do episode recaps of Noragami or Goto, so stay tuned for that, subscribe again to keep all updated to my videos. Again, thank you for watching this video, hope you guys have a nice day, bye bye.